So the last couple of Gucci Guilty Por Homme releases or flankers were very, very disappointing and underwhelming for me. This is the latest one I did a video on recently, Gucci Guilty Por Homme Love Edition MMXXI. A mouthful to say. You know, it was a lavender dominant fragrance, but to me it doesn't smell like lavender. It smells like a very, very synthetic and bad lavender. Sadly, it's not a favorite of mine. The previous edition in Eau de Parfum was also very, very disappointing. Love edition in the green bottle was okay, but not like, wow, it's great. But there are four fragrances in the Gucci Guilty series that I really love. Gucci Guilty Pour Femme is a feminine targeted fragrance that I love that's actually fairly unisex to wear. And then one is unisex, Gucci Guilty Oud, and then Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Homme, and then Gucci Guilty Cologne. Those are male targeted fragrances. I really enjoy these four fragrances, but sadly the only one that's on the Gucci.com website is the Pour Femme. What happened to the others? Are they completely discontinued? Either way, I'm gonna let you know what I think about these four Gucci Guilty fragrances that I love. Coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smalling Great Fragrance Reviews. So Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Homme is this one. That was, was the first one that really relaunched kind of Gucci's fragrances that went a little more unique for me. Then they launched Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme, this one. And this one actually I felt like it was very unisex even though it was a feminine targeted fragrance. And then Gucci Guilty Oud, this one right here. So this one actually replaced Gucci Intense Oud. And then finally a few years ago Gucci Guilty Cologne. So these are the four that I really enjoy from the series. Uh, and I really think they're really uh, worth owning if you like the ideas of these fragrances. Sadly the, the entire collection prior to these fragrances I never w cared for. And as I mentioned, they're cranking out flanker after flanker and trying to, you know, sell the latest uh, style or whatever they think is going to be popular. And as I said, this is no longer on the Gucci website. This is the Gucci.com website. This is no longer on the Gucci.com website. And also this is no longer on the Gucci.com website. This one is. This is the feminine targeted. As I said, it's a very unisex scent. This is unisex targeted, and then the other two are uh, male targeted. So I'll let you know all about these fragrances, and if they sound great to you guys, get some samples to test them out, or test them out in some stores if you still can, uh, and then you know buy your bot bottles as I see that they're probably gonna slowly fizzle away. Either way, I'll let you know about the fragrances, but before I do that, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So who is a fan? of this series of fragrances, Gucci Guilty. I guess it's the whole entire series is just called Gucci Guilty. It's been around for quite some time, but I felt like the very first time they launched the Absolute Pour Homme, they did something great, you know? Finally, their fragrances are smelling great. But I think this was a disappointment. I don't think it did very well. Um, it was leather and vetiver with cypress. Kind of sort of going into the area of Encre Noir, but the leather doesn't exist in Encre Noir series. Cypress and Vetiver does. But you know, I really do like this one. I think uh, Alberto Marias, who created all four of these fragrances, created a really, really awesome men's uh, release here uh, with Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Homme. It's intense, it's uh, rough and rugged, and it's also slightly animalic. And I think that's kind of why I don't think it did very well. In fact, our Macy's here in San Francisco had a poster up uh, for at least a year and a half to two years. This is prior to the pandemic and they didn't have this fragrance in, in the store itself. They just had the poster up. So I don't think it really did very well. I quite like it. I like these kind of fragrances. But the thing is, I think that this has similarities to um, another fragrance he created, uh, Alberto Moria's or Moria, he created one for uh, Killian called Dark Lord. Uh, it does remind me a little bit of Dark Lord. And then also uh, Louis Vuitton has a fragrance, he didn't create that one, uh, called Nouveau Monde. There are some similarities of this one with that fragrance as well. But what I like about this one is the leather cypress combo with vetiver, and there's some woodsy notes and patchouli. It's pretty rough, and it's also, there's hardly any sweetness here. Um, it's fairly savory, very woody, earthy, 
uh, and leathery. Uh, it's quite animalic, and as I said, it's rough and rugged. Um, so you gotta like these kind of fragrances. And total departure, total departure from that whole original Gucci Guilty Pour Homme, you know, DNA or smell. It smelled completely different, and that's kind of why I like this one. It smells nothing like this, and this one is a throwback to the original uh, Gucci Guilty um, Pour Om series, but this one is not. I don't find anything similar about that. So that is Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Om, and as I said, it's no longer on the Gucci.com website, so I'm assuming they've uh, either discontinued it just in the States or it's completely discontinued. Those of you that are in Europe, do you see them selling there? Any more in your stores? Let me know. Put some comments down so I can find out. The next one is the Gucci Guilty Absolute Parfum. So this one actually I felt like they're so different from one another, these two, that they have nothing in relation. But this one smells so good, guys. It smells really, really good. If you like fragrances like Dior's uh, Rouge Trafalgar, or um, there's a similar fragrance from Bottega Veneta. I forgot the name of that one. It's similar, kind of like a red berries or blackberry or um, you know cranberries or pomegranates uh, melagrana is what it's called they have that very similar smell for me this one reminds me a little bit of um, a fruitier version of l'ambre dans l'eau because it features bulgarian rose with cypress blackberry pink pepper woodsy notes and patchouli and i love the patchouli in this one with the combination of the fruitiness of the blackberry with the bulgarian rose so for me when rouge trafalgar and melagrana from um, Bottega Veneta, and even L'Ambre Don Low from uh, Diptyque uh, are unisex targeted. This fell, this feels very, very unisex. You know, it's just fruits, rose with um, uh, mostly patchouli and wood, so it definitely is um, unisex leaning to me, even though it's called Pour Femme. Uh, I would recommend it if you like the idea of it. Those of you that are men, go sample it to smell what I'm talking about and compare it to Dior's Rouge Trafalgar because it really does remind me of that. Uh, much more of that and uh, Melagrana from Bottega Veneta versus L'Ambre Don Low, but I think that whole similarity of the fruitiness and the rose and um, I guess greenness too because there is a little bit of a green touch with this but not so much as L'Ambre Down Low is but a great scent it's really really great it smells great it's a unique smell for a you know signature line designer fragrance for women and it's also not very feminine leaning so it's kind of unique that way it's um, definitely uh, unisex leaning as I said whereas this one is ultra masculine leaning this one for me is not ultra feminine does that make sense what I'm uh, asking or, or or telling you guys so check this one out and those of you that are women uh, let me know if you're a fan of uh, Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme and then also those of you that are men that have discovered this one let me know if you're a fan of it as well and as I said at the beginning of the video this is the only one out of all four fragrances I'm going to talk about today that's still on the Gucci.com website I haven't checked checked any of the international Gucci websites, it could still be on there, uh, but I mean, uh, the rest of the collection, but currently uh, this is the only one I saw on there. So the next one that came out uh, after uh, this particular one was Gucci Guilty Oud, this one right here. And for me, it felt like an evolution of this one, whereas um, Gucci Intense Oud didn't have any fruitiness and it was very popular in the fragrance community for a while. A lot of people loved it really did love that one uh, a lot. I only have tiny little bunch of it left. That's all I have left. I think this is a great alternative for it, but it's a fruitier version of that fragrance. But you know what? Uh, the original Gucci Intense Oud also didn't have any rose. And since this one had the blackberry and the rose, they've moved it over here along with the uh, patchouli in here. But they have, I think they've, they've got some cypress in here as well. I feel like the cypress comes in in the entire collection, starting with the Gucci Absolute Pour Homme, Gucci Absolute Pour Femme here, and then even going to this one as well, the Gucci Absolute, uh, Gucci Guilty Cologne. So Gucci Guilty uh, Oud uh, focuses on Oud, Bulgarian Rose, blackberry, patchouli, cypriol oil, leather, pink pepper, and amber. So it does settle to an ambery experience, but for me, it's very um, oody at the top. And again, it's a Western oud. It's not a, a, you know, a natural oud or real oud, but you know, they make it smell a little funky there. There's a little bit of funkiness in here. Um, perhaps I think the uh, mass market doesn't really like oud. Uh, maybe that's why this is discontinued. Um, I don't know. 
And again, I don't know if it's 100% discontinued. It could be just pulled from American uh, shelves and just be available in Europe. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I recommend this one quite a bit. In fact, as I said, all four of these fragrances I highly recommend as Gucci Guilty fragrances with the one woman uh, targeted one and of course unisex here and the two masculine ones. But you know, if you want a good designer oud, this definitely is great. It has the fruitiness, it has the rosiness, and it has the, you know, the oodiness, obviously, all rolled into one. So that's Gucci Guilty Oud. Let me know if you're a fan of that one, and let me know if you hated it because you loved Gucci Intense Oud, and it didn't, you know, come close to that one. Or maybe you love it because it does have the fruitiness and the, uh, you know, the rosiness from the, the rose and the blackberry. The last one I'm gonna talk to you about is Gucci Guilty Cologne, but just before I move on to that, I do want to say again, as I said, this one's not on the Gucci.com website. Let me know if you guys in Europe or other parts of the world still see this on your website or in, in stores. So Gucci Guilty Cologne, uh, for me, is a masculine targeted scent. And recently I did a powdery fragrances for men video, and I didn't put this one on there because I didn't have uh, a bottle, but, uh, Luckily, I bought this one. Uh, I bought another bottle, so I'm glad to have it uh, in my collection. Uh, so it would have definitely have landed in that powdery fragrances video, and because of the, it's a masculine offering and it's a masculine powdery offering, but it's a very very unique offering to me. I again, once again, it doesn't smell anything like the DNA of the original Gucci Guilty Pour Homme series of fragrances. This is a whole new unique creation. In fact, all of these for me are unique creations in the Gucci Guilty series of fragrances. They do not rely on the old DNA, which I didn't really care for. But Gucci Guilty Cologne is almost like a, a classic men's aftershave, barbershop, tonic, whatever kind of a, you know, you know, cologne. Uh, that's why it's called cologne. But as a cologne, it's a very, very unique cologne in comparison to something like Givenchy, Gentleman Cologne, Dior Homme Cologne, Lomi Dial Cologne. I felt like this was very, very unique, a very throwback to a kind of a powdery, uh, you know, barbershop kind of a tonic uh, or something like that. So it's very unique, but I felt a lot of negative remarks about this one as well from men. They didn't really care for it. Uh, and maybe they didn't care for the uh, powdery qualities of it? I don't know, but there's definitely lots of powder in here. Heliotrope is a note in here that's a very almondy, powdery uh, flower. Plus violet goes powdery as well, but it's known for the juniper berries, cypress, of course, rosemary for that kind of uh, uh, slightly minty herbal quality uh, that rosemary has, peppery as well. Of course, the heliotrope and violet, a white musk and patchouli. You know, it's a great, great release. It's such a great release. It's sad that um, it doesn't match or you know, people don't embrace these kind of scents that, I don't know, maybe this just smells too far out there and it's not a recognizable smell. Maybe that's why these are kind of discontinued, but they don't, when I'm talking about flankers, uh, it's kind of like from one to the other, there's kind of a recognizability. Maybe that's why those are a little more successful than this one being like the lone man out kind of a thing. You know, it smells so different than the previous versions that uh, it doesn't really do well. And then, of course, if it doesn't make any money for them, they're going to ax it. For me, as I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I never really cared for the original Gucci Guilty Pour Homme DNA. It was a DNA I never really cared for. It was so boring. You know, it smelled kind of like that really sour, sour kind of uh, aquatic um, combo of woods and things like that. It just really didn't do it for me. And when this came out, it was so different. I totally embraced it and loved it. And I think that's exactly what might be happening with these very, very unique offerings. They're so different. There's no recognizability. They come on the scene and some, you know, true perfume aficionados embrace it. And then, you know, the mass market doesn't, so they don't make the sales and then they get forgotten about. Anyway, those are my thoughts about these four fragrances. I feel like these are really, really solid designer releases, really, really highly recommended designer fragrances. Sad that they are not on the Gucci.com website except for the feminine version, this one. Um, and so 
if you like the idea of these fragrances and you can still find them, get yourself your bottles because I have a feeling they're going to be completely discontinued from everywhere. That's just my thoughts. They are completely removed from Gucci.com, as I said, but I have not looked around at the international Gucci websites to see if they're still on those websites. Anyway, let me know if, if you're fans of these fragrances. Let me know if you're a fan of this one. Have you smelled this one yet? Are you a fan of the Love Edition? Are you a fan of the previous version uh, that came out before this, the Eau de Parfum in the totally black bottle? Um, let me know, put some comments down so I can find out. I felt like the ba black bottle Eau de Parfum version of Gucci Guilty Pour Homme uh, was a complete disappointment. The, uh, the green bottle was okay. I don't currently own that one. Um, and most likely I'm going to get rid of this one as well. But yeah, put some comments down so I can find out. One last thing before I go. Uh, the thing about the whole Gucci Guilty series. Um, they're cranking out so many different fragrances like these, right? Not relying on the previous DNA of the previous releases. Why don't they come up with new fragrances, uh, you know, complete new? Like this wouldn't, this would have been perfectly fine in a new fragrance. This would have been fine in a completely new fragrance as well. Don't call it Gucci Guilty and call it something completely different. But I think it's less risky of launching a brand new release for these brands than uh, making it a flanker because they can put it in a similar bottle and get it out there and try and sell it as part of a flanker of a very popular series of fragrances for them rather than you know marketing a brand new release that might completely flop anyway those are flops i think but sometimes the good ones go first you know as they say and i think those are definitely the good ones when it comes to gucci's designer fragrances the signature lineup anyway guys thanks so much for watching today's video if you have any questions or comments please do list below otherwise please like this video please share it follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye